Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I'm in the process of making a big change here just because of some frustrations I've been having with my C-Gem. I uh, decided to go ahead and buy a Skywatcher EQ6R and it's been recently delivered, although it was on back order for a number of months. But I thought I'd give you an introduction to this mount, although many of you have this mount and certainly there is no shortage of videos on YouTube about the mount. But anyway, I thought I'd give you my perspective on the mount as I set it up both mechanically and electrically in this video and then in a follow-up video we'll connect uh, up to the software that's needed to of course perform our astrophotography sessions at night. Why did I get to this point? Well, I had left my CGM out for a long period of time, which may or may not have had anything to do with some of the recent experience I've been having. But in recently, in trying to use the CGM with my SCT during galaxy season, I was just having a heck of a time. And it seemed like the guiding performance was getting worse and worse with each successive attempt until finally uh, I had these sets of results. This is an attempt at performing a PhD2 calibration and of course what we hope for is that we have a nice set of uh, circles here along the red axis and a nice set of circles along the blue axis as it as it moves and performs a calibration in DEC and in RA. And ideally, these two lines here would be orthogonal. They're, they're not here. Uh, it's not terrible, but yeah, I thought I could do better, so I tried it again and got this result. And now I'm just all over the map. It just doesn't seem to be uh, responding well to commands. Certainly nothing here that you'd want to uh, hang your hat on from a calibration standpoint. Tried it several more times and finally on my last attempt I got this. So things were just uh, going to hell in the handbasket as it were and I decided to uh, it's time to just pack this thing in. It, it doesn't appear uh, that either uh, the gears are not mechanically meshed. Something has come loose inside the uh, mount or uh, electrically the commands are just uh, not getting consistently uh, to where they're being sent and so certainly you can't do any astrophotography if this is the kind of uh, calibration you're getting for PhD2 and uh, I decided yeah it's time to to bring it in. I uh, took off the face plate here and checked the mounting screws here to make sure these uh, the this is the uh, deck motor here this is the ra motor down here and all of these screws were nice and tight so this thing was not moving i was afraid it might have been moving and screwing up the meshing with the worm gear that's up here and a corresponding worm gear that's back behind here for the ra axis so that all looked fine uh, i then decided to pull off the uh, motor connectors and kind of sprayed them down with some contact cleaner but I wasn't confident that I was going to solve the problem. So I decided to put a backup plan in motion. And before I could get back outside to test out this reconnected and cleaned contacts here, these guys arrived, but it did take some time. As, as we all know, these days you order something and it takes a good bit of time before it finally shows up. So I ordered the uh, Skywatcher from Agena Astro Products. They take your credit card info, but they don't charge your credit card until the boxes are shipped and finally uh, they were shipped sooner than I, I thought that would be in fact uh, they arrived uh, about a month ago and they I wasn't expecting the uh, at least according to their their web page wasn't expecting to receive it until next month so actually things uh, turned out much better than I had originally thought that it might but anyway the boxes arrived and and so it's time to put them together and I uh, did set up the Skywatcher in the study so that I could practice uh, getting the new software that I'll have to use installed and seeing if I can control the mount from inside. One of the nice things I like about this mount, it does require a bit less power uh, than the CGM 40 versus 60 watts. So maybe some of the problems I was having trying to power my CGM off of uh, the ultimate power box, maybe this will alleviate some of that problem. The next thing that's really handy and I'm looking forward to using is that there, with these newer Skywatcher mounts, there is a USB 2 type B port already on the mount. And so this cable here can run directly 
from the mount to your PC, so there's no need for a hand control. And I've always wanted to get rid of the uh, the hand control with my CGEM, but there was no way to do that. Why don't we go over and do a walk around video, and I'll just show you some of the things and comment on some of the features that I see about this new mount. Uh, even though, as I say, this is, mount's been out in the marketplace for quite some time and many of you if you're not using it you've at least been exposed to what this mount is i'll just give you my my first impression if you will of the mount and we'll go from there okay guys well here's what's in the box in this case i've got the mount set up and the tripod of course uh, along with my gt81 refractor just to see how things fit together we'll take a look at the electrical connections in just a bit i've got the tripod legs the uh, uh retracted so those the bottom legs do extend out however i think for my astrophotography purposes i'm going to leave them in the retracted position as shown here when i'm outside and one of the things that i've done with the sea gym is to place a, a teflon two sheets of Teflon in that interface between the mount head and the tripod so that you can tighten the screw here, tighten the mount head down to the tripod and yet still be able to rotate in azimuth this connection through that uh, the slip, uh, low friction interface with the two uh, pieces of Teflon. Now, uh, about the knobs here, this is a common problem. It's also a problem with my CGEM. These knobs, uh, in this case on the EQ6R are extremely small. These are actually fairly painful to tighten up, which you really have to do in order to keep these two 11 pound weights at their proper position. At least in the Celestron version of this, this knob is quite a bit larger diameter and much easier to grip and tighten. Here, this is, uh, like I say, it's actually painful to turn that knob tight. Uh, the azimuth and altitude knobs are also small, which when you're outside and it's humid and your hands are sweaty, those are really difficult to to grab a hold onto. But uh, in the case of my Celestron, I was able to find some aftermarket replacement knobs, and unfortunately, I don't see those with the EQ for the EQ6R. Otherwise, I'd definitely buy them. And also, unfortunately, the diameter of the uh, shaft here, the threaded uh, rod here, is a different. A diameter than what the Celestron knob is, so I can't just repurpose the Celestron knob, so that's unfortunate. With this mount, they only give you two 11-pound counterweights, and so depending on the weight of your payload, you may be at the bottom of that counterweight bar. For example, when I replace the smaller refractor with the larger SCT, those weights are going to have to shift down by quite a bit. Now, to get away or get around the problem of giving you a larger counterweight, which I have with the Celestron, they give you a, a counterweight extension bar here, which uh, can give you a little more length, and therefore you can probably balance out whatever heavy weight that you're you're dealing with up top. A couple of things that I don't have installed. I don't have inst the accessory tray installed currently. That will attach uh, down here and brace up against these legs uh, to... Um, Kind of stiffen the legs a little bit. You get an extra uh, bar, an extra knob here, so that if you are have lower at a lower out um, lower latitude, you can replace this knob, uh, which is shorter, with that uh, longer uh, knob, and then you can uh, set your uh, altitude accordingly. For power, they do provide this cigarette lighter interface along with the two-pin screw-on interface of the, uh, as you can see here, the, the interface that goes with the EQ6R. You also get, of course, the SynScan handset, and you notice I don't have it plugged in. We'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, you get a um, little bracket here to put the handset on, but again, I'm not going to be using the handset, so I'm not too worried about that. In addition, they also give you <laughs> a couple of uh, Allen wrenches here. This one is used for adjusting the polar scope. They do give you a polar scope that's already plugged in back there. I won't be using that. Uh, they give you a four millimeter Allen wrench, but I have no idea what that is. I don't see mention of it in the manual yet, so I don't know what that is. Uh, for me, I'm going to be using the 
the QHY pole master, and it turns out that the interface plate uh, adapter plate that I have for, have you been using with my CGM also works here. I believe the opening here in the EQ6R is about five millimeters larger, which is just fine. And the set screws that come with this adapter plate can be extended and chew up that remaining uh, five millimeters. This attachment here is different from the CGM. This can be uh, tightened or loosened, and when the counterweights aren't present, you can actually retract the bar up into the the uh, mount, which I suppose may be useful for transporting. I'm not going to be doing that very much in the um, C gym. This is a screw on, screw off part here, and you don't have this knob to mess around with. Now, one of the really nice features about this newer version of the EQ6R is a dedicated USB 2. Uh, B port and you can see I've got a cable here that runs directly up and then as we'll look at in a minute it plugs into the Pegasus Astro Ultimate power box uh, as a as a direct connection with the uh, with USB connectivity to the power box and I also ordered the Pegasus Astro version of this cable that has the interface that matches the EQ6R here it screws on so it's very uh, very stable very um, solid connection and the other end of the cable has the interface that plugs in to the power box as well. The saddle uh, also again with these uh, unfortunate small small knobs I have to deal with that. My CGM adapter plate here a Los Mandy D style plate as you can see fits in nicely into this dual use saddle. You have a wider grip here for plates like this that are compatible with my CGM, but you also have a smaller uh, section here that's compatible with scopes that have this kind of uh, amount. Now in this case, if you were going to use this scope directly into this uh, saddle, you would just reverse turn this uh, plate here upside down and it would be, you could attach it directly into that uh, saddle uh, very easily. For me, I'm gonna keep it like this. I've got this dovetail plate and then my Pegasus Astro Focuser is actually uh, screwed onto the dovetail plate. So this will stay as one unit and uh, I'm not that worried about the extra weight. So now one of the main reasons for buying this mount is to get rid of some of the backlash that I've been dealing with with the CGM. Now here are, this is very similar to the to the uh, CGM in that here is, this is the worm gear location. The axis of the worm gear goes through here for the deck axis. Here is the uh, RA axis uh, worm gear. And on the other side of the mount head is the main reason for getting one of these mounts. So this is the axis of the worm gear for the deck axis. That comes down, there's a belt that comes down through here and wraps around the motor here. So that's going to help uh, significantly reduce uh, deck backlash, which is one of the main things I've been fighting with the c gym and likewise in the ra axis you've got the ra worm gear here the belt comes around wraps around the motor here and so that will help reduce the um, backlash in the ra axis now one of the things that i've noticed particularly with this brand new mount is that even though i can take off the clutch the scope is nominally balanced but this is a very it's a very stiff connection. So as you can see, I'm kind of giving it a shove and it dampens out rather quickly. So this is a very uh, stiff arrangement right now. Maybe it'll loosen up after I use it a bit. It may not. I had to have my CGM hypertuned and it's very easy to balance now. I can't honestly say that hypertuning can improve the guiding, but it certainly did make it easier to balance. And a few more features. Um, this is the part of the altitude adjustment knob here. It's been commented on quite a bit. I don't think it's that robust uh, of a connection, of a uh, method of adjusting the altitude. It's something we'll have to deal with. One of the things I do like, though, about the EQ6R is this handle. Uh, a, obviously, just from a handling standpoint of being able to carry them out in and outside, I think that's uh, very beneficial. But also, it makes a great uh, tie-off point for the two cables that I'll have coming down from the mount. I've got, as I said, I'm running everything through the Pegasus Astro Ultimate Power Box here, and I've got the data cable that comes down 
and will plug into a long USB cable and eventually it'll plug into that mini PC and I'll just control it uh, remotely through the, through Wi-Fi. But you also have a power cable that comes up um, and into the other side of the power box. Powering the mount is hopefully going to be very successful with uh, just powering it through the power box here. I had uh, intermittent success trying to do that with the uh, Celestron, uh, the C-Gem, uh, for two reasons. One, the C-Gem requires, or is at least rated for, more power, 60 watts, than is the EQ6R, which is rated for 40 to 50 watts. So maybe I wasn't giving it enough power. The power box is rated up to uh, receive 20 amps of current. And right now I've got a AC-DC uh, box inside my uh, power distribution box there that sits outside. I have one of these, except the one that's inside the box and currently plugged into, uh, which has this cigarette lighter that's compatible with the power cord from the Ultimate Power Box. The one that's inside the box and that I've been using is uh, rated at 10 amps. So I'm only giving the power box uh, half of the current that it can handle. This one uh, gives me up to 15 amps, and so I may switch out the 10 amp version that's in there and instead go to this guy here at 15 amps, and that may solve any power issues I may have. Another option I have, and I had been using with my CGEM, this is the end of the AC-DC uh, converter that uh, I bought for the CGEM. It's rated at 12 volts, 5 amps, and it's a little more power than the uh, EQ6R requires, but it has this kind of a connection. And what I can do is simply plug one of these uh, converters onto the uh, generator converters over to plug this end into here and then take the end that's currently plugged into the power box and plug that into here. And then I can power directly off of the AC-DC converter I have. But again, I hope to do everything through the uh, power box. Let's take a look at these connections. On the power side here, we have, as I mentioned, this red cable comes in. This is the power into the box, uh, up to 20 amps, 12 volt. I've got the power cable coming directly out of the side of the mount and plugging into here. This is that Pegasus Astro cable uh, that's compatible with their uh, power box. I've got a uh, another source of power, 12 volt power coming from the ASI 1600 to run the cooling fan. And I've got a third uh, power cable here that comes over from the Pegasus Astro Focus Cube. So those are the main power sources there. And then finally, I've got a dew strap heater here. So those that's the power side. On the data side, we have the environmental sensor that comes with the uh, power box that's plugged into its external port. We have the main data cable that comes down and goes into uh, right now a long USB cable. We have the USB 3 cable coming from the ASI 1600. We have the guide camera that I have plugged directly into this port here. And uh, I've got the mount uh, USB 2 cable plugged directly into this USB 2 port, and finally the focuser uh, USB cable that comes out here. Now, of course, I've got the power box Velcroed on to a perforated plate, which I have attached to another perforated plate using these little angle brackets, a very kludgy looking design. Eventually, I suspect I'll be getting rid of this Uniguide guide scope. I just want to test it out, play with it a bit. Maybe I'll like it, maybe I won't. And if I do take it out, then I can just take this sand, this plate that's sandwiched between the handle and the, uh, the scope rings and remove it and attach this one plate here uh, directly on top of the handle for the William Optics scope. And that will uh, simplify things a tad. So that is it for now. This is the uh, set of connections I have, at least something like this. Everything's connected. And now the next step is to load all the software and see if I can get all the pieces of equipment talking to each other. All right, so just to summarize where I'm, where I'm coming from and where I'm going, I've been having that frustrating experience with the C-Gem. Uh, and using the C-Gem, the, the 
I think it's a it's a good enough mount for astrophotography as long as you have some guiding software to try to control the periodic error and uh, to some degree compensate for the backlash. But the deck backlash is pretty bad and it does cause uh, some difficulties. Plus, lately I've been having the trouble I mentioned with the PhD two calibration and finally just got fed up with it uh, and thought I'd try the Skywatcher. Uh, EQ6R, which has belt drives, uh, which should help with the deck backlash. The EQ6R is actually very similar in design uh, with the CGM, and the price point is about the same. I wasn't, well, I did consider some of the more expensive mounts. I didn't want to go above 5,000, and frankly, I didn't want to go that high uh, up into the, the 3,000s even. So I wanted to stay in the uh, same price point. As I said, as long as you have uh, guiding software with a properly built and well-behaving mount of this quality, you should be able to get away with doing some nice astrophotography, even with a long focal length system like an SCT. So I feel like it's it's certainly possible uh, to do uh, a decent job with this mount, and I'm hoping that the uh, belt drives will eliminate much of the problems that I've been having and experiencing with the CGEM. I've been hearing great things about some of the guiding uh, RMS levels that are uh, much better than what I've been able to achieve with the CGEM. With the CGEM, I would get uh, maybe uh, less than one uh, arc second of RMS, but never better than 0.6. And usually in the 0.8 range and I'm hoping I see better performance with eventually with the EQ6 although it may not behave that way right out of the box. The ergonomics of the EQ6R knobs is kind of like the CGEM, very poor. The knobs are small, they're difficult to get a grip on and when it's hot and humid and you're sweating outside it's difficult to turn uh, the knobs uh, to to make these adjustments for polar alignment and for setting the counterweights at the right location. The, the knob on the counterweights for the EQ6R are really uh, small, much smaller than the uh, the knob on the CGEM counterweights, and it's, it's actually very difficult to tighten those up and not hurt your hand in the process. I couldn't find replacement knobs. I did was able to find replacement knobs for the C gem, and those are great. And unfortunately, they're different threads, uh, so I can't use those knobs on this mount. But uh, I'll keep looking and possibly try to fashion something together using parts I can get from McMaster Car. But there may be some other uh, solutions out there. I have seen a replacement saddle for the EQ6R, but I don't want to do that. One of the really nice features, I wasn't sure I would uh, have this. Uh, the recent models of the EQ6R have a USB 2 port uh, directly on the mount, so you can connect directly to your PC and don't have to use the hand controller at all. I was uh, always wanted to get rid of my hand controller with the CGEM and take it out of the loop, but it couldn't do it. I did buy the Pegasus Astro uh, EQ6R power cable, which has the, the screw-on fitting compatible with the EQ6R uh, mount and on the other end it plugs directly into the 12 volt power port on the ultimate power box but if all else fails i can fall back to the ac dc converter i have and have been using for my c gym with a, uh, a simple connector that can uh, bridge between it and the pegasus astro power cable so there are several options there but i am hopeful that i'll be able to power the mount directly from the ultimate power box and that way I won't have that cable coming down off of the setup. The deck and RA axes are stiff right out of the box. I did eventually have my CGEM hyper tuned and now it's it's uh, very easy to balance the CGEM. It's much more difficult <laughs> right now to balance and obtain an accurate balance with the EQ6 because of that stiffness in uh, the axes. We'll see. If maybe it'll loosen up, but it's got a two-year warranty, so I'm not eager to open it up and tear out the gears and replace grease just yet. I'll see what my guiding looks like. But for now, we have a new era beginning, at least for me, and hopefully it'll be a less frustrating era. For now, I'll sign off, and we'll see you in the next video where we'll be connecting up the software to see if we can get them out to run with Nina, APT, Stellarium, and PHD2. So, I'll check in with you later, guys. Thanks.